Hey guys, it's Derek with Papa Bill Old Gage Trains, and in this episode, we're gonna rebuild this Commodore Vanderbilt. Uh, gonna be doing uh, mainly the body. Uh, the engine on it is pretty good, but we're gonna show you how I'm gonna tear this whole thing completely down. I believe it's been repainted at one time. We're gonna repaint it again. So, uh, why don't you join me, and we'll check it all out. All right, guys, so as I said in the introduction, um, we're gonna be rebuilding this Commodore Vanderbilt. Um, I did a video when I picked this one up originally. Uh, as you can see, these badges have been painted over. Um, it's really in rough, well, not rough. I mean, there's no dents or anything in it, um, but it's all chipped up and all paint, you know, crappy. Um, when they had done some type of repaint on the top, these got all repainted but uh, the motor is actually in really good good condition um, I had kind of Jimmy rigged up a, a system here to hold the light in um, I ordered a new one through uh, uh, partsformarks.com and I'm just simply waiting for that to come in but in the meantime we're gonna take this guy completely apart and uh, take all this old paint off of here put a new coat of paint on it and uh, Hopefully by then I'll have that new uh, the new light bracket in here. We'll put her all back together and we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with the uh, the handrails because those got paint on them too. So uh, the other decision I'm trying to make is am I going to go real colors on this? You know, go break with the black again. Or will I do something like I did with one of my, with the Ivy Express that I had in a previous video? It's a train I made for my granddaughter. Um, we'll see. Uh, I might even, I made it, might even experiment with going with maybe possibly a two tone of running uh, the side of one color and then the top part different color. Um, we'll see. I'm going to try it. I'm going to. You'll, you'll go on this journey with me. So uh, let's take it over to the workbench. The first thing that we're gonna do is take it all apart. All right, so we're at the workbench and it's time to take it apart. Step one is get that motor out of here. So let's... <laughs> One of the things I do like is, uh, I always use a little magnetic tray for my nuts and bolts and stuff. That way you don't lose them. One of the things I do like with these, a lot of the Mark stuff, as opposed to some of the other brands, uh, you can get these motors out super easy. Um, just disconnect that light. It's just a little push pin and bang. Look at how quick that motor came out of there. Like I said, this motor's in really nice shape. Um, I did a little clean up on it when I first got it. Um, I will go back through and give it just a little, just an extra little tune up on it. But um, yeah, this motor's in really nice condition. The uh, reverse unit on this one, if I remember right, works really well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of this. Sorry about the arm in the way. So we're going to take the rest of this guy apart and uh, we'll speed through this one for you real nice and quick. All right, so as you can see now, we got it all apart. We got the main engine chassis. Um, apparently, this guy used to be gray. I don't know why they would have painted. Gray was the nice ones. The underside's all gray. There's the floorboard that went in there. We got the domes and the ring for the smoke. There's your front end piece. There's a badge. Oh, I forgot to take the badges off the side here. Let's... Uh, well, I'll get those off in a little bit here. And uh, our handrails, the cotter pins. I, I might end up replacing these if I can't clean them up. And then uh, 
that was in my my makeshift light unit and we got a couple extra screws in there so uh there there it is it's all apart uh, the next thing is we're going to take this sucker over to my sandblasting booth we're going to clean it up really nice and uh check for I don't see any denting on it or anything, so that's good. So we'll get this old crappy ass paint off of here and uh, get these guys cleaned up real nice. Throw some primer on it, new paint job. Uh, you'd be surprised at how quick you can do this. And now, granted, I've got a sandblaster, um, which I just re recently picked up. Uh, I did a previous one and when I did the Ivy Express, I just sanded all this down really nice. Finished it off with a uh, uh, I think it was a 1,000 um, grit and then went back over it even one last time with a 2,000 grit to get a really nice smooth finish on it and then put that paint on there. So uh, I did end up giving it some scratches, so I will sand those out of there. And um, But yeah, the next step, step is going to be we're going to take it over the and uh, to give it a quick sandblast and uh, get this old crappy ass paint off of it. All right, so it's all been sandblasted. These are all your pieces, obviously this shell. We got our uh, smoke ring or whatever you wanna call that. And we got our two different domes. There's our front end. That's our visor for the light. There's our front nameplate. That's two side nameplates. That's the floor that goes right back in here. We got the handrails and the two cotter pins that hold the handrails in. Next step is going to be painting. Um, we're going to put a coat of primer on it first and then uh, we'll put on the uh, the main color. Um, still toying around with what color I'm going to paint it. Not 100% sure. but So that's all your parts when it comes to uh, these Commodore Vanderbilt as far as the, the, the shell goes. I mean, as you can see, it's pretty simple. All right, so we're going to put a little primer on these guys. I'm going to give you a little... Uh, a little spray painting tip. So on the, a lot of the spray paint cans, you'll have a small little mark. 
know if you can see that, that little black mark. You want to line up your nozzle with that mark on the can. You're going to get much better, uh, much better results by doing it like that. Hang on a second here. I always end up getting a little bit on myself, some one way or another. So, gloves come in handy. Okay. So I think, I think we got it. A little bit up at the top there. Okay. So that's our primer. We're gonna let this uh, let this sit and get get good and dry, and then uh, I'll go back through. Um, if necessary, I'll give it a little bit of a sanding with maybe like a 3,000 grit sand, and then uh, we'll put on the uh, the main colors. So I've decided to go with uh, for the the main shell is gonna be a. Found a really cool burgundy and on all the accent pieces they're going to be done in black and then uh, we'll, uh, on the on the badges the badges will probably be done in uh, I don't know if I'll because I'll, I'll, they'll be black but the writing I might do that on uh, in white or I might do it in burgundy um, it won't say Commodore Vanderbilt um, I'll do this similar to the way I did my that Ivy Express because this is going to be uh, kind of dedicated to one of my grandkids. So uh, their name will go here and on the front badge will be uh, basically their birth date. So, all right, so uh, let's let this dry and uh, we'll come back out here in a little bit, take a close look at it. And uh, if it gets dry enough for me, who knows, maybe I'll even put that, uh, that top coat of paint on it. Okay, so uh, with that top coat, I'm going to try something that I hadn't before. Um, Rust-Oleum has a new type of a spray paint can. Um, this has five different um, like levels as far as it uh, spraying. You can have, uh, uh, there's a lock position. I mean, cap doesn't come off. So there's a locking position. Uh, you can put it on high output. I'm reading the back of this can, so if I'm not, <laughs> seems like I'm staring at you guys. Um, you can have a high output. You could have a standard output, low output, a vertical fan, and a horizontal fan, where it's just a, like a fan thing. 
So, uh, and it's got a QR code on the back. Then I'm going to scan that and because it says to learn more. So maybe it'll give me some tips on uh, the best way to do this. Um, the color that I'm using, like I said, is burgundy. And then it'll be black for the accent pieces. Um, so let me do some quick research. And uh, I mean, it's still light outside. The thing's drying pretty quick. It's a nice warm day here in the Chicago area. Um, I just might end up putting us putting this final coat on there so I'll be back all right so now it's time for the black Sure, I get all the handrails. Double checking to make sure I get good coverage on everything. go and I just realized through that whole painting the camera was off so there it is guys um, while I was painting I noticed that the camera angle was off to where you guys weren't seeing the whole thing so uh, that's it I might put a second coat on there. I haven't decided yet. But uh, yeah, this this paint can with these the dial on there is kind of nice. Um, I put it on the uh, the low output setting, and to keep it from running, I didn't get any runs. I uh, do have a problem sometimes where I get runs when I'm painting. I get impatient so there it is guys it's painted all right guys so I've decided to wait and got everything painted I'm letting it dry but I have decided to wait I'm not gonna put it together uh, this week so this is gonna be ending this video uh, next week I'll do a video of putting it all together and showing you the finished product so uh, thanks for watching as always like it says behind me like subscribe share um, Definitely, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I got more videos uh, in the works. Uh, even though summer's coming up when I usually get pretty busy, um, I, uh, I'll still be putting out content for you. Um, and for you hot rodders, stay tuned in June. Going on the Hot Rod Power Tour with my son this again this year. And so I'll be definitely sending doing videos highlighting uh, everything that was going on each day. Um, this year, there's a, actually a group of us that are going. Where there's going to be three cars going, so it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, everybody. So, uh, like I always say, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate, uh, you know, the support that I'm getting. Uh, keep your comments and your questions coming. Um, I really like those. Um, and uh, I keep on saying this one over and over. Um, I'm getting a lot of people asking um the video i did where I, which I, I have two trolleys running on the track at the same time i get a lot of people asking me how to do that with fast track i am going to do a video showing how to do that with fast track because the one i did was tubular it's basically the same process um there's just a couple of extra things you have to do to the fast track um but i will be doing that video um 
hopefully within the next month or two. Um, guarantee I'll get it done by the end of this summer. I know it's a long ways off and some of you guys are impatient because I keep on saying, hey, I'm going to do this one. I am going to do the video. And just, uh, it's all a matter of getting around time to do it. Um, also next weekend, hopefully I'm going to be going to the Wheaton Train Show. So if you see me, say hi. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, choo-choo. Thank you for watching my Papa's videos.